Hi, um, Cheryl Kamarul Zaman. Yeah. Um, great to meet you. You're from the Malaysian Nature Society yes, and right. you are the curator of the urban community forest. So, you know, our society is really keen to know what is the urban community forest? What is it for? Uh, well, uh, urban community forest uh, is short. UCF for short, yeah? Uh, is basically uh, uh, an initiative which was started in 2017 and uh, our main objective is to just create awareness among the, the urban, urban uh, population, the urban uh, uh, citizens about the importance of maintaining, retaining and uh, promoting more green areas within the city centre specifically KL city centre because uh, a lot of the green areas within the KL city centre right now are slowly but surely disappearing if not mostly gone by now mm. so what we're trying to do is we're trying to try uh, create a, an awareness and uh, trying to promote among the urban society the importance of maintaining green areas and also to keep keep whatever green areas we still have left as uh, recreational sites or as, as a community uh, a community mm -hmm. recreational area for everyone to yeah. enjoy. And why is it important that we preserve them? What, what, what benefit do we get from preserving them? Well, you can tell uh, the, the difference between highly developed urban areas and, and, and um, small townships with a lot more nature surrounding them. The environment is really different, yeah. You get cooler and more, um, better a better what do you call it? Uh, quality of life, you know. If you're surrounded by nature, yeah, and uh, surrounded by trees and forests, yeah. Or living in, uh, growing among the urban uh, the development also, yeah. Whereas uh, you get a little bit less quality of life. Mm -hmm in larger city centres, mm -hmm. the air is more polluted, it's hotter, yeah, there is not as cooling during certain times of the days, yeah. And uh, again it's also not as aesthetically pleasing to the mm -hmm. eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are all some general uh, what do you call it, some general things, general differences mm -hmm. between having green areas within mm -hmm. developed areas and no green areas mm -hmm. at all. The quality of life drops, yeah. yeah. So uh, there's a lot of difference actually, you know, that you can find. So um, I know some of the scientific reasons why you know it reduces temperatures, it removes pollutants and things. But what do you experience, and what have you heard some of your visitors have experienced in terms of how they feel inside and their mental well-being when they're in these kind of spaces? What effect does it have on them emotionally? Um, most of my groups, when I show them. Or when when they when 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 they're in these these environments, yeah. There's a sense of wonder, yeah, and a sense of uh, uh, gratitude, yeah, as to how um, how these green areas actually uh, benefit benefit them in terms of uh, health wise, yeah, in terms of well being, and uh, in terms of the, you know. Just, just being more calm, being more happier. Yeah, you are being happier. You are happier in an environment where it's more, there's more greenery. You are more calm, and and uh, basically a sense of wonder as to what's around you. Yeah, and uh, instead of just looking at concrete walls and concrete mm -hmm. concrete towers and 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 uh, monuments, you're looking at things in detail. Yeah, like plants that grow around you. They, 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 they actually show me they actually show me that they are quite appreciative of what's what's around them yeah I think most of them have been living in, in, in concrete jungles for so long that when you when you take them into uh, an environment where it's just natural and there's just no concrete uh, you know no concrete um, what do you call it uh, buildings or no concrete uh, structures around them it sort of creates a sense of uh, calmness in them yeah so a lot of them are quite happy such an environment. Mm. So urban community forest, obviously this is, is a big one and we're going to look at that in a minute, mm. but could it also be more localised in terms of 
local parks, local areas, local green spaces. Does it? Does an urban community forest have to be something big that involves sort of hiking through forest and jungle and things, or can it be something a lot smaller and a lot more local? I don't think it should be too demanding, yeah, for people to come and visit because you have national parks, you have sanctuaries, you have wildlife parks, you have, uh, you know, we have quite a lot of these uh, bigger areas, so to say, and more challenging areas all around the, the country. East Malaysia and Peninsula included, but uh, as for, as for the environs we are referring to, they don't have to be too big, too big. They don't have to be too challenging. It's something that every age group or every you know every walk of life should be able to just breeze through, but at the same time get some enjoyment that they would get if they were to visit a national park, so to say, or if they were to visit a wildlife sanctuary, so to say. There are still things that can create a sense of wonderment, still things that can create a sense of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, curiosity about the, the, natural, the natural environment around them, and also can promote good health, yeah? As, as far as mentally, uh, as far as your mental health is concerned, or as far as your well-being is concerned. So, uh, it could be something as easy as walking through maybe, uh, uh, maybe some of you may have heard of Lake Gardens, some of you may, may have heard of uh, the Putrajaya Botanical Gardens, yeah? It could be something as easy as that, yeah? All walks of life, all age groups can just breeze through it, but at the same time, they can still see what nature is all about. They can be close to the plants and the, and the species of uh, trees and, 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 and shrubs that they find, that they would find in national parks, so to say. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't have to be too demanding. Yeah, it can be very easy, mm -hmm. uh, something very easy for them to uh, appreciate. Um, where are the biggest um, urban community forests now? Are we not in Malaysia? Well, where we are now at Federal Hill, it's, mm -hmm. it's the biggest one. And you have a role in terms of helping to propagate all the other forests. What, what do you do to help encourage these smaller community urban forests? We do try to, uh, because urban, uh, the, the urban community forest, UCF, we have a nursery, mm. yeah, which you might want to see later on. But the nursery provides saplings of uh, our natural uh, Malaysian plants as much as possible. And uh, we try to supply these, uh, these plants to other community forests around uh, the Klan Valley, so to say. And uh, they do replanting efforts within their own community forests. And, uh, this, this sort of provides, uh, provides them with some education of what we have instead of uh, looking for foreign plants. Mm -hmm. see, a lot of our landscape plants in Malaysia are foreign, uh, originally, originally foreign plants. Yeah, a lot of the garden plants you see in our gardens are, a lot of, are exotic, they're not, they're not local plants. So what UCF is trying to do is to try and introduce more local plants to our landscape and our to our green areas within the Klang Valley and within KL City Centre itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a long process to, to replace established commercial nursery plants with uh, with our local plants. Yeah, it's going to be a long process because uh, a lot of our local plants have been neglected in the sense they haven't been developed as commercial plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's making some progress, and we do have some local plants which have been developed as commercial plants over the last uh, century or so. So uh, uh, we're trying to push for that to happen. In return, the other community forests will sort of barter with us and provide volunteer, uh, volunteer time or they may even provide us with our plants from their sites itself to be planted in these areas, in, in the areas that we are concerned uh, about here in, in KL, uh, specifically Federal Hills. Yeah. Where are some of the other forests that um, do something similar but maybe on a smaller scale to this one at Federal Hill? We've sold about five to six hundred saplings of a uh, species, a local species of tree, to uh, the Kota Damansara for oh, community okay. forest, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, which is located obviously in Kota Damansara. Um, and uh, we've also sold a couple of, uh, a few thousand. Uh, species of trees to the National Monument uh, mm -hmm. Park, uh, the Taman Tuku, yeah? mm -hmm. 
and they have planted already planted and is already established right now and they have their own people looking after those saplings mm-hmm. at the moment yeah mm-hmm. and uh, Putrajaya also bought uh, uh, I can't remember now I think it was about a thousand a thousand saplings also from us give or take I may be wrong but around that figure from us to plant in their botanical gardens in uh, Putrajaya also mm-hmm. yeah so uh, those are some of the some of the you know, areas which have already sort of uh, brought over some of the saplings that we that I've been propagating here mm-hmm. over to, over to the areas. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And um, you were saying earlier about you you do education trips, you do talks, you have school trips, um, and volunteers come over. What are the opportunities for other people to sort of engage in what you're doing here at Federal Hill? Well, uh, we. You know, uh, we have a Facebook and we also have a web website. The MNS is a website, mm-hmm. and we we promote uh, volunteer programs for UCF. You know, and if people get if people find out about these programs, they normally contact us and we'll will uh, discuss activities that we can promote. You know, for their for for the respective groups mm-hmm. over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I normally uh, I normally sort of give them a. You know, a briefing of what we're doing, introduction of what UCF is all about, and then teach them about the importance of urban, urban green, green urban greenery, yeah, and also give them a bit of briefing about the environmental conservation mm-hmm. as a as a country overall, the situation we are in, the problems we are facing, mm-hmm. and the solutions that we may be able to uh, apply to these problems. Yeah, so uh, normally. Yeah, that that that's basically why I would, uh, uh, the kind of activities I will give them talks, yeah, and sort of show them what what this is all about. We do have two, we do have a few trails at the back here with, that is within the federal hills itself, uh, that we've developed, yeah, very very uh, simply, uh, but it's good enough to be an open classroom for a lot of people to just appreciate the development of forests, yeah, over 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 a few years and how young how a young forest can eventually develop into an older forest i normally teach them the steps of how a cut down forest can actually recover and then from the recovery from the, from the recovery how it can develop into a proper forest again so those are normally the you know the the, the sort of uh, presentations or, or the lessons that I would give people that come that come to visit ucf I imagine that would be fantastic for school trips to actually kind of see those stages and to actually feel it and smell it and experience it firsthand. I, I can imagine for schools it's a fantastic experience. And for volunteers, you were saying that some of them have been here for, uh, they come a couple of times a week and they've been with you for many years and some just come for a holiday or they, they've just got a couple of weeks spare. Yeah, so really, so yeah. volunteering is just whatever people can do, right? I mean, it's the different levels of, of volunteering here that are available, right? Yes, different different, different needs, different packages, yeah? I, I'm forever in need of volunteers, yeah? And uh, I encourage volunteers because when you're, when, you're, when you're on the ground and when you get your hands dirty and when, you, when, you, when you're doing the work itself and when you're surrounded by the environment yourself, you absorb and you learn and you experience a lot more than just me telling you mm. more about it. Yeah. So I prefer for people to actually come volunteer their time and while they're volunteering while they're doing their volunteer uh, what do you call it time, while they're volunteering their time, I will brief them slowly on what's going on around them. Yeah. To me that's a better way yeah. of uh, of teaching people feel not just to absorb what I'm saying but to absorb everything around them at the same time yeah so the understanding and, and the, the, the the experience becomes more valuable to them and they can relate more to it when 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 environment is threatened when when when, when a certain area is under under threat to development they feel a more a feel a better sense yeah. of responsibility a stronger sense of responsibility yeah because so you, you tell someone something they can they can accept it, yeah. But they're not gonna feel it when they lose it because they don't see it, they don't feel it, they don't they, they haven't actually got their hands dirty or their feet wet, so to say. So if they if they come here and they volunteer their time and they get 
involved in what's going on around them if something happens to that area then they take they, they feel a more they, they, they have a more what they call it they have a, be, a better understanding mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and a more uh, a bigger sense of responsibility mm -hmm. to try and save that yeah. particular area mm -hmm. so uh, I encourage more volunteers to, to come over and feel it for themselves 